Uh, Ed Lee, Mayor of San Francisco, I have uh, with us, of course, uh, Senator Mark Leno, who's here to make uh, a very, very key announcement. And why don't I just play MC here, because I, I think we want uh, our senator to speak first. Uh, but what I want to say uh, in introducing um, Mark is uh, for two reasons that he's down here today. Well, actually three. Clearly, the weather here is very inviting. But also, um, I am looking at this as being kind of a Valentine's delivery day for a message uh, and a proposal that uh, our senator is making today. But I want to thank him uh, for his announcement because actually thank him, thank him again, and then thank him for a third time because this effort in revitalizing uh, the discussion around our vehicle license fee is going to be a very, very big help to our local economy. But without any further ado, let me introduce to you Senator Mark Leno. Thank you, Mayor Lee. I thought I was going to play MC and get to introduce you for the first time, but I would much rather be introduced by the mayor and thanked and thanked and thanked again. So I'm pleased to be here uh, with Mayor Ed Lee and with many community leaders, the sponsor of our bill, Jim Lazarus from the San Francisco Chamber of Commerce, and the president of the Board of Supervisors, David Chu, and our newest supervisor from District 8, David, excuse me, Supervisor Scott Weiner, and I'll be introducing other guests in just a moment. Uh, we are here today to talk about the reintroduction of a recently created acronym for our lexicon, the VALA, V-A-L-A, Voter Approved Local Assessment to the Vehicle License Fee. I'll try and spare you too much detail about the history of the Vehicle License Fee, but it was created in the state of California way back in 1935 as 1.5% sales tax on the purchase price of an automobile. It is progressive by design. The more expensive your automobile, the higher you pay, the less expensive, the less you pay. You can deduct 10 percent. You can depreciate 10 percent the value of the automobile every year you own it. So you own your car five years, you pay half of it. You own your car 10 years, you pay none of it. It served the state of California extraordinarily well through its golden years of the second half of the 20th century. It was the iconic Republican governor, Earl Warren, who raised it to 2% in 1948, which is where it stayed until 1998. When the, and keep in mind, none of this vehicle license fee money ever came to Sacramento. It all stayed with cities and counties for local use, to pay for fire and police protection, to keep our streets swept clean, to keep libraries and parks open. But it was relaxed in the good times of the dot-com boom by two-thirds, in real numbers, the average car owner was paying about $300 a year. That temporary tax break in the good times of 1998 reduced it to only $100 for the car owner, but we couldn't stiff the cities and counties, so it was the general fund that has made up that difference of $200. But the trailer bill language at the time said only as long as there were sufficient general funds to make up that difference. Well, when I got to Sacramento in 2003 and we were staring at a $30 billion deficit, who could say we had, at that point, $5 billion to make up the difference? We didn't. So the legislature restored it, along with Gray Davis, though Arnold Schwarzenegger made it into a campaign issue during the recall. And his first day in office, he rescinded that restoration of the vehicle license fee, now costing the state $6 billion annually. Imagine. We've got a $26 billion hole to fill, and $6 billion of it, actually that 26 is over 18 months, $9 billion of it is to keep offering car owners a tax break that we cannot afford. So Arnold Schwarzenegger put it on our credit cards. $40 billion now has been drained from our general fund in the seven years since he rescinded that restoration of the vehicle license fee. So in this severe crisis, overlaid with an international fiscal crisis, I think you all are aware of the severity of the cuts that Governor Brown has proposed that the legislature accept in the coming weeks to be matched with revenue of equal amounts to be approved by voters in June of this year. Now, if my Republican colleagues are successful in silencing the voters of California this June, the cuts to cities and counties will only get worse. 
by a magnitude of about another 100%. So completely in line with what the governor campaigned on and is now proposing, returning responsibility and authority to local governments to return closer to the people the delivery of important services and giving them the authority to increase their own revenues. That's what this voter approved local assessment will do. It raises nobody's tax, let me be clear. It merely gives authority to every one of the 58 county boards of supervisors in California. Gives them the authority by a two-thirds majority vote of that county board to decide whether or not to let the voters of these counties decide for themselves whether or not to restore their own vehicle license fee anywhere up back to that 2% or anywhere in between. So again, with Arnold Schwarzenegger's rescission of the restoration of that vehicle license fee, it was at 0.65 until two years ago when the legislature temporarily increased it by 0.5. So it's currently at 1.15%. That will expire at the end of this fiscal year, end of June 2011. If voters have the opportunity and agree to continue that temporary increase, maintaining current tax levels for another five years, it will remain at 1.15, which would allow our County Board of Supervisors, should this bill become statute, to consider letting the voters consider raising it up to 2% again. And that 0.85 difference would be worth approximately $50 million to San Francisco. $50 million. Now, if the voters don't have the chance or don't approve that extension, it would revert back to the 0.65, and that difference of 1.35 would be worth up to $75 million for San Francisco. Imagine how that would benefit the deficit that this county is facing in the coming years. And you can imagine where it might go. Our Muni, which is on life support right now, in desperate need of new and dedicated revenue, could potentially have a piece of that pie. Our social service system, which is so desperate for funds for so many of the programs that we care about, they could have a share of that pie as well. So you'll hear from some of those folks who would benefit from it, but I want to introduce a good friend and partner in this attempt to let voters decide how they want our city and county to look like and operate in the coming years. A sponsor of our bill when we did this a few years back as a district bill when Arnold Schwarzenegger vetoed it, and again, a sponsor of our bill when we brought it back two years ago statewide, giving authority to all county boards of supervisors, and that would be Jim Lazarus, Vice President of the San Francisco Chamber of Commerce. Jim, thanks for joining us and for all your support. Thank you, Senator. Uh, this is probably unusual to think that a Chamber of Commerce is out here supporting legislation that could result in tax increases, but as the Senator said, this is really not a tax increase. It's a bill that gives local communities the option of restoring a tax rate or a fee on vehicles that existed historically in the state of California. Um, we support, obviously, reform of city government, compensation reform, pension reform, efficiencies, but we also recognize that there's a revenue side, and the strength and the importance of this bill is that it gives the public, it gives two-thirds of the board of supervisors the opportunity to put before the public for a simple majority vote the restoration of a tax rate on vehicles that seems fair to us. It restores the fee to pre-1998 levels. It's progressive because the fee is tied to the value of a vehicle. And it applies equally to residents and businesses that have vehicles licensed in the county. Those meet our tests, and we were pleased uh, the last few years to work with the senator, in fact, then assemblyman, on the original bill to partner with the Labor Council of San Francisco in supporting the legislation, and we look forward to working to see it passed and signed into law this year. Thank you. Thank you Mayor Lee has to get back to his very busy schedule in just a moment, but as I reintroduce him to say a final word, just want to say, how thrilled we are to have you, Mayor, in your office. Not unlike, yeah, let's hear it for the new mayor. 
not unlike our new governor, it seems every day you continue to hit just the right note, strike the right chord, and it's terrific to have you leading the city, and I'm very pleased that you were able to make time from your busy schedule to join us today and offer your support for what I think is a very important opportunity for San Francisco and for all counties in, San Fr in, in California. Mayor? Thank you. Thank you, Mark. It's just simply, I wanted to add my personal support for this opportunity because what it is, is an opportunity to have a local dialogue with our Board of Supervisors and our residents to give ourselves a chance. You know, when this was rolled back in 2003, the city's resources were reduced by $56 million every single year since 2003 because we were denied that opportunity to reinstall our vehicle license fee and have those resources available. That has meant a tremendous amount of services that were depleted, our roads not taken care of, our muni suffered some of its worst times since that since that period and so many people have been asking what can we do together and I would just want to have that opportunity to have a very what I consider to be a very positive dialogue with our voters and let them know that this is something that they can participate in and vote upon as we proceed I also want to know on a personal level I've been looking for an ele electric vehicle for myself and I can't think of any other way to do that except to wait upon this legislation to be passed because I as a personal resident of San Francisco would gladly pay that additional vehicle fee even if it's an electric vehicle because I want to contribute to the quality of life in this city and I want to be able to represent that I can be as a, as a vehicle owner contributing to all the wonderful services that we provide. And I know that that's a conversation that our Board of Supervisors looks forward to. I commit, uh, as this uh, SB 223 suggests, that we can do better locally with our control. And that I'm so glad that our governor will be able to do this. We are obviously going to have that conversation with the governor to make sure it can be done. But I thank again, three times over, for our senator to be reintroducing this at this very, very needful time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mary Lee. You're, you're going to be our lucky charm. This is going to be third time is going to be the charm. Also pleased to uh, recognize and thank our good friend, our county assessor recorder, Phil Ting, for joining us. Of course, we have our fire chief, Joanne Hayes-White. Thank you for being with us. So we're going to ask a couple of our local electeds to say a word in behalf of our voter-approved local assessment. First, President of the Board, David Chu, followed by Supervisor Scott Wiener. Thank you, Senator Leno, and thank you all for being part of this important discussion. In 2003, Governor Ar Arnold Schwarzenegger took a wrecking ball to our budget with his decision around the VLF. And as you have just heard from our mayor and from Senator Leno, this has cost our state $6 billion a year locally close to 60 million dollars a year in 2009 i introduced a measure to consider a local vehicle license fee and i want to thank eight of my colleagues there were nine of us that were prepared to place this on the ballot in 2009 we had broad-based support including the chamber of commerce who i want to thank for being here labor environmentalists transit advocates across the spectrum but we couldn't get this done because Senator Leno, despite all of the work he did, and despite the fact that the state legislator, legislatures were ready to move forward with him, were stymied by the veto of Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger. It is a new day. We look forward to a new conversation. On Tuesday, I will be introducing a resolution to support what Senator Leno is doing here. I want to thank my colleague, Supervisor Scott Weiner, for helping to sponsor this resolution. We need to restart this conversation again. Obviously, we know that during this great recession, again, we are going to have to engage in very difficult budget decisions. And for any driver who's frustrated with the potholes in the road that can't get fixed, any muni rider who's frustrated about waiting for a late bus, 
any cyclist or pedestrian that's concerned about safety on the streets. We need these revenues so that we can continue to patch up the holes in our transit system and patch up the holes in our San Francisco city infrastructure. So thank you for being part of this, and we look forward to hopefully better news from the legislature, and we look forward to the conversation we'll have with San Francisco voters about this, hopefully in the near future. Hi, I'm Scott. Scott Weiner uh, on the Board of Supervisors. And um, first, I want to thank Senator Leto for showing so much leadership around this. Uh, anyone who knows the senator knows that he is tenacious and uh, doesn't give up easily. We saw it with the marriage equality bill, and now we're seeing it uh, with the vehicle license fee. So I look forward to working together to help make this a reality. Um, we, uh, we are suffering here. We haven't had a police academy class in years, and we're starting to see a decline in the number of police officers in the San Francisco Police Department. Uh, Muni is suffering. Our roads are suffering. We're reducing psychiatric beds at San Francisco General Hospital. This budget crisis is causing real problems for the quality of life in San Francisco, and we've been handcuffed at a local level for too long in terms of addressing that. So this is an important measure, and I'm going to work hard to make sure that this uh, is a reality. And I also want to stress that for voters who are concerned, that, well, why are you uh, asking for more money when you, when you haven't gotten your own fiscal house in order? I also know that in November I'm very uh, optimistic that we're going to have a strong pension reform measure on the ballot to help get our own house in order because you can't have one without the other. I know we're going to do both, and uh, thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Weiner. And President Chu, uh, I forgot to give you the bill number. It is Senate Bill 223. And as I said, this third time is going to be our charm. Uh, I'm going to introduce our fire chief, Joanne Hayes-White, to share a few words as to how some potential new revenue for San Francisco might benefit public safety. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, first, let me acknowledge and applaud Senator Leno for his efforts at bringing solutions to local economies, like here in San Francisco. The idea to restore the vehicle license fee makes good sense, particularly during these challenging economic times. And to give you an idea, what this will do, and I appreciate Mayor Lee and uh, our two board members, President Chu and Supervisor Weiner, understanding that core services is what the foundation of this city is all about. Certainly I'm advocating for fire protection and emergency medical services that we don't cut those core services, but it's also about public safety in the police department. It's about health and human services and it's about our transit. These are core services that the community expects and deserves and particularly in this challenging budgetary times, this makes good sense to restore this fee, to at least take it to the voters and get their ideas on that. So, Senator Leno, thank you. Welcome back to our city. It's a beautiful day. And uh, I appreciate being here, and thank you for your attention. Thank you, Chief. Gosh, all this love I'm getting. I'm going to come home more often. <laughs> uh, we also know that our Muni system, which is without a doubt, the backbone of San Francisco and the Bay Area. Without it, we have no commerce, we have no quality of life whatsoever, and it is struggling and could certainly use a new and dedicated revenue source. And so to speak on behalf of Muni and our Municipal Transportation Agency is the Deputy Executive Director of the SMTA, SFMTA, and that would be Carter Rowan. Good morning. Uh, Carter Rohan, Deputy Executive Director of the SFMTA. Uh, thank you, Senator Leno. I'm very pleased to be here today to express the SFMTA's support for Senator Leno's bill, SB 223, which will provide an important tool for local government to generate resources for public services, including public transportation. San Francisco and the SFMTA have faced serious budget deficits for the last several years, which threaten vital public services that the city provides. These deficits are in part due to the continued decline in state support for local services. In this fiscal climate, San Francisco must consider all possible fiscal alternatives. Senate Bill 223 will provide the city with another tool that will allow the city to continue to provide the level of public services that our residents demand. 
Thank you again, Senator Leno. We are thrilled to be able to support you on this. We think this is an important issue, and it's imperative that it goes through. Thank you. Thank you, Carter. If you can uh, stay with us for just a few more minutes to put a, a finer point on exactly what the services which could be sustained with this new revenue would look like. I want to bring forward some folks who can talk about health, human services, and about the well-being of our children in San Francisco. So we have Noel Simmons, who is the Deputy Director of Policy and Planning for the Human Services Agency of San Francisco, followed by Dick Hodgson, who is with the San Francisco Consortium, uh, Community Clinic Consortium, talk about health care needs, and then Bryce Schofield, who is with the Children's Council of San Francisco. Noel? Good morning, everyone. I want to thank Senator Leno uh, for introducing this important piece of legislation, but also, and more importantly, for being a tireless champion on behalf of the poorest and most vulnerable residents among us, not just here in San Francisco, but statewide. Um, make no mistake about it, these are the folks who will be most acutely impacted by the state and local budget cuts that are being proposed for next year. Here in San Francisco, the Human Services Agency, in order to meet its budget reduction targets, is looking at things like uh, reducing services at our homeless drop-in centers, reducing hours at homeless shelters. We are looking at cuts in permanent supportive housing programs that have been successful in getting people off the street and remaining stably housed. We're looking at cuts to senior centers. We're looking at cuts to nutrition programs for elderly people. We're looking at cuts in naturalization services for elderly residents who are trying to establish citizenship so that they can be eligible for federal SSI benefits. The list goes on and on, and these are the types of services that Senator Leno's bill would give San Franciscans the opportunity to step up and elect to backfill with a local vehicle assessment. So thank you all for being here today, and thank you again to Senator Leno. Hi, I'm Dick Hodson. I represent the community nonprofit clinics of San Francisco that provide primary health care to about 10% of the city's population. Uh, Low-income people in uh, various neighborhoods around the city, culturally and linguistically diverse, uh, the kind of health services that we want for the city of San Francisco. And I'll just reiterate what a lot of you already know and some have already said. The health care safety net has been fraying for the past several years at exactly the, the time when it's most needed, when employ, unemployment is high, people are losing their health insurance. Under Governor Schwarzenegger, uh, two very key health services funding streams were completely eliminated. Uh, care for the uninsured who are not eligible for Medi-Cal for a variety of reasons. Uh, the adult dental program under Medi-Cal was eliminated. So if you're a low-income person seeking dental services, it's getting increasingly difficult. And we, are, we really are in a crunch time. It's really time to reverse the trend that's been taking place for the past several years. So we fully support this legislation. Thank you. Good afternoon, my name is Bryce Schofield. I am the Director of Public Policy at the Children's Council of San Francisco. Um, we've been around for 38 years, and for the first 27 years of our agency, we saw the benefits of what the vehicle license fee did for California. And we would love to see that come back under the Senator's um, measure. In this time, over the last few years, we've seen dramatic cuts to the infrastructure to support the economy around keeping families working by offering childcare. In San Francisco, we have um, over 4,200 children that um, are eligible for child care subsidies, but in no way can we meet that demand. Over 200,000 at the state level. This is just makes good economic sense. I think it represents the integrity and the moral values of our state, and it positions us best to continue being an innovative leader that we have always been. And uh, I, I certainly hope that we'll continue to get the great support that we need to just doing the basics that our Californians deserve. Thank you. So I want to thank all of our guests, Mayor Lee and the supervisors, our sponsor, the San Francisco Chamber of Commerce, all of those who provide services to San Francisco. I think you've got a clear idea of exactly what could benefit and what could be harmed if we don't have this opportunity to let voters be able to have a say in what we can provide and what we cannot. 
as a city and county here in San Francisco. So happy to take any questions you might have if we haven't hit all the points already. Yes. The question is, have we started any conversation yet with the new administration and how the governor may receive this when we, and I intend to get it to his desk later this summer. Uh, no, we have not yet had this conversation, but again, given that the very theme and philosophy behind this bill is local control voter determination, you can see that's exactly what the governor has proposed in this budget, returning services, authority, and responsibility back to local agencies and having revenue supported by the voters. So it's right up his alley. Yes. Question is, do I think voters will accept more taxes right now? I think any response I could share with you would be complete conjecture, but to silence voters at this critical time, I think is absolutely wrong. Yes. The, the chamber has polled this issue over the years, uh, along with other tax measures. As recently as last year, this was passing by a 10% margin in San Francisco, if given the opportunity. Prop AA last November had a small state authorized increase in vehicle license fee of $10 per vehicle. That passed with almost 60% of the vote. Uh, other tax measures that have been suggested all fail. This is the one that San Francisco voters seemed uh, supportive of. So again, it's really and basically about letting voters have a say. Any other questions? Yes. Yeah, uh, with places like Lyon and Martin apparently experiencing really bad uh, fiscal management, what specific changes do you need to see in agencies like that before you're running a before anybody? Well, the state has no money to be giving to anybody right now, so that's out of my purview. I believe the Board of Supervisors, if they haven't already, may be considering an audit of Lyon Martin, but again, that's uh, at the local level. If not, thank you very much for coming today.